Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you five features of the G1000 that perhaps you either didn't know about or didn't realize they were there to make your life easier. Let's go ahead and get started. The first feature is the turn coordinator. Now believe it or not, when a lot of people think of the G1000, they're like, oh no, I've lost my little ball and I don't know if the plane is slipping. But believe it or not, there is an integrated turn coordinator in a G1000. Matter of fact, if I look up here, you see my little triangle here, which shows me my handy dandy little roll. You'll observe underneath, there's this little tiny guy right here. Uh, this right here is your turn coordinator. Now, just like the regular turn coordinator, if it slips to the right, you give it a little bit of right foot. If it slips to the left, you give it a little bit of left foot. Now, what's so fascinating about this particular tool is you'll find it just as sensitive as, as it is if you were using a regular ball as well. Now, I've got my foot on my right rudder right now. If I release it, you'll observe that it goes ahead and pops us out of coordination. The next feature is the fact that the G1000 allows you to approach any waypoint at a desired course angle. Now, usually when people think of waypoints, there's something that you dial in, such as a Gardner Mass up here on the right, and you have no choice but to approach it at the angle that you set it. But believe it or not, it's possible to adjust this angle directly. Now, if I come over to my OBS button, which is all located on my PFD, if I were to go ahead and press that button, you will notice now we've got this little warning that says suspended, uh, meaning we're suspending waypoint processing. The other thing you're going to observe is the fact that my lines have changed color. Now, if I were to grab my course control and actually adjust it, you can see that I can change the angle that I want to approach my specific waypoint at. In this particular case, if I wanted to approach my angle of the waypoint like this, uh, perhaps I would come from the south to line up with the runway, or even better, let's line this thing up with the runway, something along those lines, I can now opt to do that by using that suspend feature. Now, if I flip this back off suspend, uh, what you'll observe here is my airplane, of course, now we're a little out of course here, is going to try to find this new line and actually guide me over to Gardner. The next option we're going to take a look at is the ability to turn on synthetic terrain on or off. As we have right now, you can see we've got this uh, beautiful uh, green rendering of a lovely southern Massachusetts here. But let's say we want to use a more conventional view, or we want to make it decluttered, or maybe we're trying to improve our frame rate a little bit. One of the things we have the ability to do is actually turn that on or off by pressing the PFD option button at the bottom, selecting SVT, and then deciding what we'd like to do. We actually have two choices here. Uh, one choice we can do is we can shut off the heading labels, like you can see my tree 360 here, but shut that off. And lastly, we can shut the terrain off completely, in which case you're going to have a completely blank screen. Minus, of course, the you know attitude indicator. The next useful feature that you have is the ability to actually take communication frequencies and load them into your standby automatically by simply selecting what you want to do. To do this, go ahead and pick what you'd like to do. In this case, I'm going to use navigation frequencies. So if I come up here and I push this in, it lets me select between the two. And what I want to do is I want to find the specific frequency in here and actually load it in. So what I'm going to do is take my mouse. So you've got a big knob, little knob. If I take the big knob, this is going to open up my pages. And those are going to be the ones down the bottom. Now, if I sit here and take it to the waypoint options, it gives me the ability to research things about a waypoint. So if I come up here to my FMS controls and I push this button in, you'll see that it highlights this little area here allowing me to type in information about that specific waypoint. Now, if I come here and give this a little quick little twist, you can see that I can actually dial it in. So I'm going to come over here and click on this button for keyboard entry, type in where I'm going today, which is going to be keen. I'm going to press enter. And what you'll observe is it will show you all sorts of useful information about this particular airport. As a matter of fact, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I can pick different runways and have that all highlighted up on my screen. For example, I know I'm going to be landing two today. So I can actually open that up just like that. Now, where it gets so handy is if I come down here with the big knob and come down to some of these options, I can actually preload some of these frequencies. So, for example, if I wanted AWOS and I want to load it right into COM2, I can come up here, switch to COM2, highlight this, press the Enter key, and you'll observe that it automatically preloads that frequency in there. Now, if I wanted to listen to the AWOS, I can simply bop that button, and without having to fiddle with any other knobs, I immediately have my communication frequency. The final feature on the G1000 we'll take a look at today is the ability to quickly delete waypoints. Uh, believe it or not, we have the ability to quickly delete waypoints inside of our program here. And now the way that we do that is two different methods. Uh, the first method we could use is actually going into our flight plan and adjusting it that way. The second method that we can actually use is if you open up your flight plan page, you will notice a list of all your flight plans. Using the big knob, we can actually adjust it. So let's say, for example, I wanted to add a new waypoint in right here. I'll just go ahead and toss it in real fast. I'll add Orange County regional because of reasons. And let's say I want to delete my gardener waypoint here. Now I can either go direct to my next waypoint or I can highlight the waypoint in question 
press the clear button, and then it's going to ask me if I want to remove it. If I do, I'm simply going to press enter. And what you'll observe, if you look here, is it has successfully deleted my uh, other waypoints. Of course, it got the wrong one. Now, the fun part here, of course, is after you've deleted it, you have to tell it where you want to go, because now it doesn't have an active waypoint. It's still on that particular leg before. So now let's say I want to go in here, and I want to go ahead and activate this particular option. I can actually press the menu key, hit activate leg, press enter, and press OK, and you'll actually see that it automatically recreates that leg that I have there, allowing me to continue my flights. Enjoy.